everybody and welcome back. Uh, this is the last part of lecture one. So we've installed Java and uh, hopefully you have that up and running and we've installed the Eclipse. Uh, that's the IDE that we're going to use. Uh, you may use a different one but all the instructions are going to be shown to you using the Eclipse browser, excuse me, the Eclipse IDE. So uh, it's probably to your best um, advantage to use the same tools. We've configured the, uh, the system uh, we've set the path so Java's uh, recognizable. We've set our work work um, workplace um, directory, um, so we're all set actually software wise. So now what we're going to do is kind of go through an introduction to object orientation and kind of figure out what it is we're, I'm actually going to be teaching you in this class, um, starting with lecture number two. And lecture number two, we will actually write our first program, um, Hello World. Um, so it's going to be a small one, but we'll create a class and we will. Um, Get the uh, get the Eclipse uh, utility to actually run it and see how the program runs and take a look at the what 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 the output is and stuff like that and we'll talk about applets and we'll talk about applications and stuff in lecture two um, but to kind of conclude this particular introduction um, the way that I describe object orientation is I like to use the acronym API um, and you can see on your screen what it stands for the A P I E and uh, each one of these areas pretty much is the basis of object orientation. Um, so we're going to start out talking first, and this is the order that I'm going to take this class through. We're first going to start out by looking at the concept of abstraction. And abstraction, by definition, is a way of looking at something or viewing something. If you think about the concept of a car, um, a car has an engine, and the concept of the engine is an abstraction. Um, by definition. And it's actually the same kind of definition that we're looking at in terms of object-oriented programming as well on the computer. Um, the engine is a kind of a generic word. Every car has an engine. Airplanes have engines. Boats have engines. Um, and the engine itself is a very, very high-level look or description. And what it is we're really talking about is all those subcomponents, everything that's inside of the engine that's all kind of hidden from the user in that level of abstraction. Um, so you might say that abstraction as a concept hides details and uh, makes it easier to kind of comprehend what it is we're talking about. Because if I, if I went through all of the different components, and I'm seriously, I'm not a mechanic, I have no idea what's in an engine, but I don't really have to. All I have to know is that it's an engine. I don't really have to know what the fuel system and the water system, air, I don't know what else, but all that other stuff in there, I don't really have to care about that. Um, and I don't have to know anything. And so that's really the definition of what abstraction is all about. And so in terms of object orientation and what we'll be learning in this class is what well, we'll be writing things like classes, and a class is an abstraction, actually. And we have this concept of abstract data types, you know, a queue, a stack, um, all sorts of different types of data structures that we use in programming that we're also going to look at in the course. And just as a caveat, you don't actually have to have any background at all. You don't have to know anything about data structures. You don't have to know anything about object orientation or programming in general um, to understand completely all of the concepts that I'm going to present in this lecture series. Um, so, anyway, so when we get done talking about abstraction, we're going to move on to the concept of polymorphism, which is essentially something is polymorphic if it can change and it, if it can adapt. So, what we're doing is we're going to be creating objects, and an object is the true core concept of object orientation. Everything revolves around these objects, and the object is a person, place, or thing, or concept. It can be a physical in existence of something, it can be a concept of something. Now, objects are all over the place in the real world and by concept if they're not like a physically existing object they could be something like a sales invoice a report card um, something that is created as a concept but it doesn't really like exist in terms of an object um, and when we have a polymorphic object we have an object that can adapt and change um, to meet its environment as an example the, the common classic example most people use is a print object and a print object, um, you know, might take and print out a character to the screen, or it might print out a number, or it might print out an image, or an email file. And it doesn't really matter what it's printing out. The concept, what makes it polymorphic, is its ability 
to kind of adapt towards whatever input we give it so that it can display whatever output is needed for that particular input. And it kind of adapts and changes to its environment to morph into what it needs to be. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about that as we get through the course. Um, another key component is the concept of inheritance. And actually in lecture three, we're gonna start looking at inheritance. And how this is gonna work <clears throat> is that we're gonna go through the Java programming and we're gonna write program after program. So by the time you get done with this series, you would have written um, at least a dozen programs. And each one of these programs is gonna demonstrate each one of these different features. And after we get done writing a couple of programs, we'll have something that we can kind of build from concept-wise. And we're gonna take those concepts and turn it into object-oriented design because there's really a, a, a definite design pattern to object orientation. And that's really what I wanna teach you in this course is how to use, how to create designs that are truly object-oriented. Because you can program, like I, I said already, you can program in a programming language that is object oriented and not use object orientation at all. Um, you can do use a procedural kind of, kind of way of, of or line by line functions, things that don't actually take advantage of object orientation as a concept. So I'm going to show you how to program actually using object oriented features of the language. And inheritance is one of them because why would we want to reinvent the wheel every time we need something? So we'll talk about hierarchical structures and classes. We'll talk about the Java classes and how even the built-in Java structure all works through inheritance as well. And so inheritance and classes and abstraction kind of work together. And so does the concept of encapsulation, if you think about it. And uh, encapsulation is sort of, uh, a lot of people call it information hiding. It's when we take and we, we say this is a print object. And this print object prints something to the screen. And we don't really worry about what it's printing or how it's printing it. We don't know how it's doing what it's doing. We just call it. And if we can work that in, it kind of adds, again, a level of abstraction that makes it easier for us to understand. So encapsulation hides all of the importance, excuse me, all the unimportant, unnecessary details, gives us a public interface that we can use this object with to... Um, expand on it to, to actually work the object to do stuff with it without having to worry about all of the implementation details and things because one of the you know what a couple of the good things about object orientation the reason why people follow object oriented designs is because there's some necessary goals that have to come out of this one of them is reuse and um, if we have a proper object oriented design we reuse components and so we have fewer of them and everything has a perfect identity to it and everything works into the system correctly and it provides a lot more efficiency and um, it makes things easier to program in the long run it, we can grow in time we can build a repository of classes and just keep building on that as a hierarchy and that gives us a lot of power gives us a lot of structure as well and so reuse is important um, the other thing is you know make it easy make it easier for the programmers to understand the source code understand the concepts because if the design is simple and easy and clear then it can be modified in the future it can be built upon and um, we know a lot less effort um, so reusability efficiency uh, you know obviously of course the fewer number of classes the better structure of the code the faster it's going to run usually the better it's going to be uh, suited to meet its needs to solve the problem that it was designed to solve so so essentially what we're looking at is this PI concept, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. And we're going to put all these pieces together. I'm going to show you how it relates to the Java programming language. Keep in mind that everything I'm going to show you also works towards other programming languages. In fact, everything applies towards C++ as well, or Smalltalk, or any other programming language that you might use that is purely object-oriented in nature. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the series. As you go through the videos, um, you'll notice that each one of them I'm going to try and put a description on the video itself to let you know what it's going to be what, what what's going to be covered in that video. So you could possibly skip through th something if you already know it, or go back and look at something again over and over again if you need more help with it. So anyway, I will close out lecture one. You're finally done with it, and um, if your system's all set, ready to go, starting with lecture two and start building Java programs. Take care.